you look at pathway mechanisms and you have a molecule that's absolutely critical to, to instigate the proteins that are responsible for autophagy, it makes sense, at least in my mind, that you have to have this molecule on board. So I don't know that I even call it a fasting mimetic anymore as much as I call it an essential in nutrient for autophagy. So it's actually a fasting enabler. Yeah, I would say yes. That's probably a better term for it. Now, can I induce the autophagy without fasting by using it? Yes. I mean, I'm going to get more adequate autophagy. I think fasting has some other benefits as well besides autophagy. So, you know. Oh, of course. Fasting is a broad spectrum thing. Right. All right. So it sounds like you're saying that if someone had a choice between taking spermidine and eating a, a schedule without restricted eating windows other than you know, don't eat late at night um, versus intermittent fasting versus going on rapamycin, it sounds like spermidine would be your number one recommendation. You know, my belief in aging and longevity is you're going to have to attack it from multiple pathways, right? So I, you know, I recommend spermidine and I recommend rapamycin and, you know, for the right people fasting. I don't know that fasting works for everybody. I'm pretty thin. I'm pretty lean. Fasting is hard for me because I lose a fair amount of muscle when I fast, even short fast. It's hard for me to get enough protein and then I can't exercise. And if I can't exercise, I go completely crazy and nobody likes me. <laughs> but I, I think that when you look at rapamycin and it's, it, it's at least somewhat inhibition of mTOR2, that, you know, th those are pieces that, you know, that are a, a, an, another player. And, and I, you know, we know that there's, we're not going to find one magical bullet 